after the hour on a wonderful Friday, the last Friday of the month of May. It's the 31st, it's 2024, and this is Wake Up GI with Jeffrey Smith. Of course, as promised, we've got a wonderful slew of guests today, and we're going to kick it off with a young lady that I'm just having the pleasure of meeting. But of course, I'm not from, I'm not uh, a stranger to the establishment that she's here representing. I don't know if you heard or heard me telling the story, Tiffany. Quickly, uh, I was just talking about, man, it might have been about 12 years ago, just sitting around uh, at our at a building that both Curtis and I used to work in, and just remembering, you know, he would kind of ask me about Tuskegee because that's where I went. And, and talk about agriculture. He, we were just talking. He would talk about the food desert and some of the things that his wonderful church wanted to get into to kind of help his community. And you know, I, I talked about you know in your lifetime, sometimes you meet these different types of people. And I and I always like to kind of run into people that I like to call doers. Yeah. You know, because th these are kind of people that you sit around and you talk. Because I, yeah, I consider myself somewhat of an idea guy, and I like to do those kind of things. But then you run into those people who are doers, and you don't see them a lot because they're always out doing stuff. But you sit and talk to them, and next thing you know, about three weeks later, you're like, hey, where have you been? They're like, guess what? I'm starting a farm. You're like, what? Yeah, I just bought some land. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, I mean, we were just sitting on the stairs talking about this. Like, yeah, I'm heading to Wisconsin. I'm going to Purdue. I'm doing this. And so I always appreciated that about uh, Curtis and the way that he has put this wonderful team of people together over at Face CDC. And, you know, we work with them all the time. And then my wife works with them during the summer and things like that. So it's pretty cool. I just wanted to tell you that we love your organization and we're looking forward to talking to you. So first of all, go ahead and introduce yourself, Tiffany. Yes, well, first, that is just great. And I'm a Diller grad, so Tuskegee Diller HBCU. There you go. There you go. And Howard. Got Will Hampton in there. I'm going to say it too. Okay. And Howard. Okay, so we are representing this morning. Yes. So, yes, I am Dr. Tiffany Jamison. I am the program director for the New Ag Jump Program, which is the next urban agricultural uh, generation program with our jump curriculum, which is the Junior Urban Master Producer yes. program. That is our program for the youth yeah. under the Faith CDC. So we are excited to be here this morning. We have a lot of things that we've been doing. Right. We just can, we expect to continue to grow and expand the program. Um, so it's it's good to be here. You know, uh, kind of speaking as uh, uh, HBCU guys, I've always kind of posed this question. Uh, on this show and some of the other uh, other shows that I used to do, I always used to kind of wonder, and I kind of understand the answer because, you know, obviously, you know, slavery and things like that. But I've always, you know, going to school down in the South and going to, and kind of, you know, the Southern HBCUs, I think you see it a little bit more, that they were more or less agriculturally driven. You know, that's kind of what the idea was. I know Booker T. Washington specifically was trying to go out here and make, uh, of newly freed slaves self-sufficient and it's always kind of marveled me that a group of people that through the history of this country were so close to the earth I mean we were you know black people were pretty much the primary guys who were putting information into the almanacs and things like that they understood the the earth the better because they were living and working it on a daily basis it has always amazed me that we are not into agriculture as much as we should, it, it seems like it would be a natural affinity for us, right? And so I always appreciate this new movement that's come up in the past 10 or 15 years where you see people down in Atlanta. And I know there's a number of people that my wife and I follow because we're kind of into gardening and urban farming. And, you know, we, we kind of been networking with people across the country, but it is coming back. It's coming back in big waves. And so I love that this youth initiative that you're putting out here and trying to get young people to understand that it's absolutely cool to go out here and grow your own food. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, it's funny you said that because I think there's a stigma due to slavery yeah. that comes from that thought process like, I don't want to be a farmer. Yeah. Not realizing agriculture is what sustains this country. Yes. And so guess what? If you don't have food, you don't eat. Thank you. And so I think we are trying to really instill in the youth that if you can grow your own food, you can sustain your community. Yes. You can sustain your household. Right. You can sustain yourself. So one of the things we've done over the last three years, because this is our third year, um, we started off year one with 25 students. Right. And then we expanded to 50. And this year we have about 63. And we have just kind of instilled in them consistently saying, hey, you know, this is for you to be able to sustain your environment, right. eat organically, be healthy yeah. by the things that you grow. Yes. Because if you know what you're eating, then there is no uh, 
question about the chemicals yeah. and all of the, the horrible things that they are putting in our food. Let's just be real. We know that. We know that. We have a lot of preservatives. We have a lot of things that are not healthy for our bodies. And being a provider, I have to say, you know, I've seen patients who, if they could just shift their diet, yes. it would make a world of a difference. It would. So we're even instilling with them to think about, hey, let's major in agriculture. So let's That's what I'm talking species. about. Let's look at the FAMUs. Let's look at the Kentucky States. Let's look at, at the Langstons and think right. about this as a career path. So we've actually partnered with the USDA in some instances for those students that are really thinking about agriculture. Hey, there is a program that is available through the USDA. Uh, it's a scholarship it is. where if they choose to uh, maintain a 3.0, right. they have to choose. Okay. It's a choice, of course. Maintain a 3.0 once they get to undergrad and throughout high school, they can be a part of this program, apply for some of the 1890 land grant institutions, wow. get a full ride with a stipend. No. Nice. They have an internship every year. Yeah. With a got stuff to do in the summer. Yes. Job yes. At the end of graduation with a job in the USDA because you've decided to focus on agriculture. Yeah. And agriculture is such a broad spectrum. So it could be food science. It, it could be farming. It could be a lot of things under that umbrella. But it's those things we want our youth to understand. Like right. This is a career path. Right. That can take you very far. Yeah. No. No. I, I absolutely appreciate my background is kind of in that because that's where I was at. Cause I went to Hampton for undergrad went to ski for the veterinary program okay, yes. and so i you know like i said i was exposed i learned about the usda they weren't offering that kind of stuff because I, I mean not not around there i would have heard about it but i'm i think that what you're saying is absolutely true because i don't think that and i'm going to be specifically to the black and brown communities i'm going to say specifically black because i do think the brown community is a little bit more in tune with this than we are and that is is about the food sciences. I think that we are just have kind of resigned ourselves to just being consumers. And right now, the way things are going, and you know, let's just be honest. Every two weeks now, you're hearing about recalls. Now we got the avian flu, and it's driving. It's it's affecting us not only you know physically with our health and what we're ingesting, but also economically because it's shooting prices up. And so you really got to start. We've got a lot of people on this rock called right. Earth right now, and right. you know, so we've got to start to really look at resources. And if you can go go out here and sustain your own family, yes. then you are helping the planet as well as helping yourself and, and, and saving some money. And that's exactly right. And I think that you said something because we talked about food deserts. So when you think about Gary, it is a food desert. So yeah. one of the things you have to go outside of your community to eat, eat yes, and to buy groceries. Why? Why do you have to do that? Why? So you can learn how to maintain your own farm or yeah. garden. Guess what? Your chickens are right there. Your ducks are right there. Your eggs are right there. Your goats are right there. Your fresh fruits and vegetables are right there yeah. at your fingertips. So therefore, you don't have to go outside your own community and give somebody else the money because we already know when you go into some of the other places, <laughs> we won't really go there, but you know they're not going to necessarily focus on quality for us. Right. They are just trying to make a dollar. Oh, absolutely. And so we don't think that's how that should be. As, as people, we should be able to say, hey, you know what? I want quality food. I deserve quality food. And I should not go broke. Thank you. Trying to buy quality yeah, food. Yeah, it's getting so tight. Why do I have to go to Cherville or Maryville or any other one of those places our, our, outside of Gary? Right. Or even back to Chicago to buy quality food. Right. Guess what? I'm going to grow my own food. Thank you. I mean, we've been sitting around here yes. pipe dreaming for a Whole Foods to kind of, go, you know, pop up in your community. You, you, can, you, you can surpass that by going out here doing it. So we're talking with Tiffany. Uh, who is working with it? What's it called? New Ag. It's called New Ag. New yes. Ag. It's a wonderful program. It's in its third year. She's working over at, uh, with Faith CDC. Shout out to our guy Curtis Whitaker. Yes. Uh, and the one thing that I'm hearing is that every year that you've had this, the students have kind of exponentially grown. So yes. is it word of mouth? I mean, you know, because obviously the students that leave there, I, I know. I think it was last summer. My wife was doing a pro program there and. And so Curtis uh, asked me to go over there and speak to some of the students just about what we do over here. And I just noticed that he had the students working in a lot of different stations. And, you know, listen, they weren't complaining. They weren't, I mean, they were drinking their water. It was hot that day. But they really saw purpose in what they were doing. And so I would assume that that kind of attitude breeds word of mouth. And then other kids hear about it and they want to be a part of it for the next exactly. summer. And you're absolutely correct. So I think the first summer, we, like I said, we had 25 children. And they were so enthralled yeah. in learning about all of the aspects of the farm. So, you know, of course, the first thing you see are the goats. Uh, so, you know, the they thing. saw the goats, but 
I think after that first week, they getting the eggs, learning about bees, learning about how to just even sustain the soil. Right. It, it just kind of piqued their interest. Yeah. And so after that first summer, we had 25 students to graduate, and they did. They went back and told their peers. Yeah. And it wasn't even about the money because they did get paid. It was, it's a paid internship after they do the, uh, the classroom theory portion. Right. And um, they went back and shared with their peers. Yeah. So the next year, that 50 came very fast. Yeah. Because they said, hey, let me tell you what I learned. Okay, I learned about this and I learned about that goats and, and the chickens and the eggs and the bees. And that just, in turn, youth. Word of mouth. Yeah. The youth then said, hey, okay, well, you did that. I can learn about it. Yes. That. And so it just, word of mouth has been the key. Yeah. And I think that's peer. That's yeah, that's peer exactly what it learning is. learning and, you know, that engagement with one another. Right. And I tell them all the time, it's about relationship building as well. Because right. you want to learn how to build relationships. Right. Learn how to communicate. Learn how to share information with other people. Because one of the things that oftentimes happens in our community is that we kind of have that crab in a barrel mentality. Yeah. And so we're trying to break that as well. Right. Like like share what you've learned. Share. Empower other people. Right. So this is one of the ways that they've been able to do it by sharing with their peers. Now I want to get into the graduation, what that looks like, but you just kind of touched on something that I think is the broader picture, and I think that this could attitude could be used in all communities, but specifically in, in our communities. And that is is that, you know, let's just look at where Curtis and you all have your location. And it's very accessible. It's right outdoors and things like that. But when you get young people and people that are going out here investing and working, they take a little ownership. And so, you know, think about this in a, quote, city like a Gary, Indiana and things like that. The goats are healthy, unmolested. The chickens are healthy, unmolested. The, you, you get to grow a garden because the word of mouth gets around like, let's not cause any problems over here. This is a good place. Let's try to protect and take care of it. You know, let's care, you know, if we're going to do mischief, let's just not do it here. Don't disturb this beautiful area. And I think as you expand that attitude, it can encompass the whole city and we can really try to kind of change our attitudes. I agree 100 percent. And I think that they do. They, the children have taken the youth yeah. have taken ownership because they are very proud yeah. of what they've learned. And they're very proud of the farm. Yeah. So it's kind of like they pat themselves on the back when they do something new. And they're like, yeah, this is what I've learned and this is what I'm doing. And you're right. It, it causes them to want to make sure that it's a protected area. It's a protected area. There you go. Yes. So let's talk about the graduation, Tiffany, because it, yes. as you talked about, yes. this is a process. Uh, there is a there is a little stipend, some money's involved, but that's really not the big big picture. But tell us what what the whole program looks like. Is there some in class academic aspect to this? Yes, it is. So as a matter of fact, our eight week program is a theory based program. So they're actually learning curriculum. Yeah. So, uh, under New Ad Jump, there is a junior urban master producer curriculum that is yielded under the umbrella of Faith CDC, and they actually sit in class for three hours oh. on Saturday yeah. uh, for eight weeks. And they uh, we just finished our cohort this last uh, last week, last Saturday. They, we actually were um, at the Gary Public Library here on Fifth Avenue, right. and they came and they were dedicated every single Saturday yeah. to come in and learn about agriculture right so to see that in itself every saturday, every um, saturday april through may they came and then after they complete these eight weeks now we get ready to start the internship right and the internship will last seven weeks three okay. days a week and like i said it's a paid internship they will be at several sites we've partnered with uh, about five additional sites outside of faith farm yeah and so they get an opportunity to go to these sites do hands-on immersive skill training right and they will put into practice what they've learned in that classroom so they can now build their skill set in the in the environment <laughs> and so when they come out and they graduate what do they do they have a title of master gardener or what they what? will be junior Jun urban master producer oh yes, so i like they that get a certificate yes. so they actually have a full-fledged graduation yeah that will be taking place um on this Saturday, June 1st, and that will be at the Art House at 11 a.m. Yeah. So we are inviting the community to come out to support our youth that have worked very diligently in getting through this program and before they start the internship. And so that will be taking place once again on this Saturday, June 1st at 11 a.m. at the Art House. We are very excited. We have the mayor coming as yeah. one of our guest speakers, yeah. as well as Mr. Jerry Rayner, who is coming from the USDA. Nice. And so we, um, we're very excited. They are going to be celebrated. Yeah. Because they've made the, the choice and the stance to achieve this goal. I agree. And to accomplish it. So. Well, we've got to ask, obviously, the most important question about that. What kind of food is being served at this event? Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I want to share that because we may have a lot of 
But I will tell you, it's going yeah, to be a can, very great menu. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, and a lot of fresh, beautiful pro yes. food that's produced. Yes. Okay, we'll talk afterwards because I still have that question in my mind. I know. Life. I have to tell you offline. You definitely need to come through. Now, for people that are hearing about this for the first time, right, because now there's a graduating class and I'm sure there's going to be uh, an open enrollment for the next round. How do exactly. people go about doing that? So I'm glad you asked. As a matter of fact, we will be starting um, in January for the next okay. one. So we, we try to be proactive. Yes. We know that students will be sharing and they, you know, we've had returning students. So we had two cohorts. We have a first year cohort and then a returning student yeah, cohort. Yeah. So um, first year students, we want to make sure we kind of put the word out there now because the returning students are going to come back. Right. Because this is for grades 6 through 12. Okay. So anybody entering into sixth grade the summer prior to. Yeah. And then, yeah, and as a matter of fact, we have a few that have come out of actually high school and they're actually going to be freshmen in college they've already graduated and or and or they are freshmen in college um so we try to start very proactively the summer like january of the summer right to. so right. january 2025 we will start putting information out there okay however i do want to provide the email address for anybody interested now because i am uh, already kind of tallying up students yeah you gotta get that count going yes i yeah. am because we want to just kind of be on top of our game <laughs> exactly um, because we want to make accommodations and so and with that being said we have students from diverse learning backgrounds right. so i want to be very clear okay diverse so we have Children that may be on a spectrum. We have children that yeah, have different learning gardening, it's really hands on, yeah. inclusive. We right. want everybody to be able to participate because there is no big eyes or little eyes. It's everybody working together. And once again, it's about them building relationships right, right. and empowering one another and uh, just being able to work together and learn together. I like this. I like that. Once again, give out that information yes. on graduation. Again. So the graduation, once again, will be taking place on Saturday, June 1st at 11 a.m. at the Art House, yeah. located at 411 East 5th Avenue, right here in Gary. It's across from the Gary Railcat Stadium. And the email address for us, and I'm going to spell this out, is newagexplorers um, at gmail.com. So I'm going to spell this out. It's N-U-A-G-E-X-P-L-O-R-E-R-S dot G-I at gmail.com. Correct. It was like a spelling bee right there. Yes, and as you see, the spelling bee just took place for a young man. I could probably have one as well. Um, however, I want to make sure. So that's newagexplorers.gi at gmail.com. Nice. And so if you have any questions, if you want to get some additional information, please shoot me an open email there. And we will definitely be looking forward to receiving some students that will be participating next year because, once again, we have... Completed this year, yeah. and we're getting ready to start the internship, but we're excited for the expansion. We we know that we're going to continue to grow. So. You definitely, I, I, I know you will. No yeah, you're that, pretty soon you're going to have to put people on waiting list. We are, we are. You, we you are, know, we you are. know what's happening. Uh, well, we appreciate it, Tiffany, very much, very much. Before you go, give yourself a plug. What do you do? Oh, okay. Well, I do many things. However, I am a uh, family practice nurse practitioner. Nice. And I also am a realtor and I'm um, a CEO. So wow. I have my own company called Silas Health Solutions, and I also work for a medical center in Chicago. Oh, my goodness. I'll plug that one. But um, so, yes, I do many things. I have many hats, but I also, like I said, I'm the program director here. For the new ag. So okay. I love the youth. Um, I work across the age spectrum. So I work with adults um, who have dementia, yeah. cognitive behavioral uh, deficits, impairments, things like that. Right. As well as just like I said, across the age spectrum. Wow. So family practice is what I do um, on that end. And like some a realtor. And Coffee's a big uh, part of your life, isn't I, it? I am always <laughs> probably away um, and on team. So those who can't understand, yeah. you know. But yes. There you go. It's been an absolute pleasure, Tiffany. Good Likewise. information putting out. We appreciate you very much. Uh, and good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me. No problemo. All right. We're going to take a break when we come.